Quick reminder that the description has a link to a resource website that you can use to help contribute to ongoing Black Lives Matter organizations. You can do a myriad of things like donate to bail funds or sign petitions, all of which go a long way to fighting systemic racism. Thank you very much for your time. Hello everyone! Golden Nova here, and welcome to another episode of Plus Ones, a series where we take a single card, break down what it does, and explore what it can do. The terrible twosome of Kissakil and Lilla have been revealed, but that's gonna have to wait until Thursday. Gotta keep it fresh for the stream, after all. Thankfully, that's not the only news we've gotten from Genesis Impactors. While the mysterious fourth member of the Magistus Coven has yet to be revealed, we've got... Wait, what's going on? Oh, so they revealed Zoroa while I was writing the script for this episode, huh? Hmm, awkward. But that's gonna have to wait till later. For now, we've got a new addition to the cast of our favorite dragon-themed intergalactic mechas. It's time to talk about Drytron Meteornis equals Q-U-A. But first, in true YouTuber style, I'd like to ask really quick if you could please like and subscribe if you've enjoyed my content so far. That way you can stay up to date on new releases, and my brain makes the happy juice when good number go up. If you really like what I do, ringing the bell will let you know the moment new videos drop, and when I go live for my weekly streams. There's also my Discord if you want to hang out with the community, and my Twitter where I ask the burning questions of our age. When are we going to get a plushie of Lilla's Gator Puppy? Thank you for your patience. And now, back to the video. So, quick refresher on Drytrons. The archetype can be split into two different categories, the first being the modules, the smaller level ones that build up your resources. You summon them by tributing a Drytron or Ritual monster from your hand or field, and they can do so from your hand or grave. When you do that, they grab you a little bonus on top of it, like searching cards or summoning other modules. However, by doing this, you lock yourself out of special summoning anything that can be normal summoned or set for the turn, both before and after. The second category is the mechs, which was limited to just Drytron Meteornis equals DRA until just recently. They've got a huge stat line, can pop two face-up cards your opponent controls during their turn, and can't be targeted by monster effects. It can also swing at every special summoned monster your opponent controls if you manage to summon DRA using only two levels worth of monsters. You can pull this off by using their new ritual spell, Meteornus Drytron. Instead of checking against levels, it checks against attack. So two 2,000 attack modules equals one 4,000 attack mech. The only restriction is that you can only tribute machine monsters for it, but on the other hand, you can ritual summon any monster from your hand or grave, so I'm pretty comfortable saying it's the new gold standard when it comes to ritual spells, especially when combined with themes that let you discard your rituals from hand for their effects. But now we have a second mech to add to the arsenal. Drytron Meteornis equals QUA. Stat-wise, they match DRA down to a T. They're a light machine level 12 ritual monster with 4,000 attack and defense, but whereas DRA can't be targeted by monster effects, QUA can be targeted by spells and traps, so this time, you are immune to infinite impermanence. Sweet! If QUA is destroyed after having been ritual summoned, you can special summon any number of Drytron from your grave whose total attack exactly equals 4,000, except another copy of QUA. This translates to either two modules or a properly summoned DRA, very useful considering you can summon them in attack position. And since QUA doesn't specify who needs to do the destroying, managing to trigger their effect during the battle phase presents an exactly lethal 8,000 points of damage by itself. And considering the kind of combo potential I've seen that this deck is capable of, it wouldn't be too far of a stretch to say that it can easily tack on any supplemental additions to help get that 8,000 points through. And on top of that, it seems like there's a bit of a theme going on with the mechs, where you get a little bonus if you manage to summon them using just two modules. During the main phase, if you manage to fulfill the requirement of only using two levels worth of monsters to ritual summon them, you can Harpy's Feather Duster your opponent's spells and traps. And I have... mixed feelings about this. Essentially, we have an effect that's very strong versus rogue strategies that are hoping to win games by trading favorably in card advantage by using traps, or have a number of face-up spells and traps that support their primary game plan. But I'm hard-pressed to think of a strategy that's dominating the top tables that's going to be exceedingly hurt if you manage to pull this off. Granted, it's basically a free effect if you summon them correctly, but the process of summoning them isn't free, and that's where we run up against the concept of the opportunity cost. In basic terms, you can think of it as whatever you give up whenever you take a certain action. If you only have enough ritual material to summon either DRA or QUA, the opportunity cost of summoning one is missing out on summoning the other. So keeping this in mind, we have to ask ourselves the question, 
does QUA provide anything to the theme that you can't have by running any other card? I think when it comes to pushing through destruction effects, QUA is very, very useful. Since they can't be targeted by spells and traps, cards like Imperm and Compulsory Evacuation Device are useless, and while blowing up back row isn't going to cripple many opposing players, it can clear a path for your other cards that would otherwise be more vulnerable. And if your opponent has negation to stop that back row destruction by way of, oh, I don't know, a Borolode Savage Dragon, it does tend to negate and destroy. So you've baited out some negation while keeping the exact same number of attack points on board. Or in some cases, you could just run over the Savage Dragon. Halka Fibrax isn't going to give them enough of a boost to withstand 4,000 attack points after all. But is that even the best way to clear back row? What if QUA gets bounced or just sent to the grave before you can activate the effect? Or what if they just trigger all their cards before you can get rid of them? The mech is a little slow in that regard, but you know what isn't? Odd Eyes Gravity Dragon. In both cases, you'd have to worry about the ritual spell being negated, though if Drytron Fafnir's on the board, you won't have to worry about that. However, whereas QUA is an activated ability that you can only use once your game state is open, leaving lots of room for your opponent to interact with you with, Gravity Dragon triggers on summon and can't be responded to, leaving your opponent with no way to get slippery with their spells and traps. It's about 1,200 points shy of QUA in the attack department, but 2,800 is still nothing to sneeze at. And bonus, it forces your opponent to pay 500 life points whenever they want to activate... well, anything. True, the only life point that counts is the last, so it isn't much of a deterrence, but it may help make up the attack difference and basically locks your opponent out of the game once their life points are low enough. And upside, along with all the search effects that are inherent in Drytron proper, they're also searchable by preparation of rights. And let's be real here, don't you want to be the person who's known for winning with Odd Eyes Gravity Dragon? But despite all that, it's not like this member of Yuya's Odd Eyes team completely outclasses QUA. Gravity Dragon bounces, but doesn't destroy, so if you can't close out the game that turn, your opponent will still have the opportunity to play them. And while the Dragon's effect will resolve because it can't be responded to, this does remove the possibility of baiting any negation, which may be necessary against boards that you'll need to resolve more cards against. This is definitely one of those situations where you're going to need to know the metagame to include the optimal choice. Something else to keep in mind is that the inclusion of another mech opens the possibility of adding another ritual theme to the mix. Because of how generic Drytron is at supporting the whole ritual mechanic, there's room to use some cards that haven't gotten much love, and one of those is a recent retrain that was in Cybernetic Horizon. Demise, Supreme King of Armageddon. QUA may be able to destroy all of your opponent's spells and traps, but Demise can blow up everything. Sure, your own cards are collateral damage, but every card of your opponent's that's destroyed means 200 points of damage to them, which can wind up being a decent chunk of damage in one go. And if you have to resolve it with a Ritual Summon QUA already on field, you still get the float effect. With 7,000 attack on board, destroying 5 of your opponent's cards with Demise is enough to close the gap, and that's if they're still at full life points. You could just as easily make them regret resolving a Cosmic Cyclone earlier in the game. There's a lot of interesting options here, but I'm still feeling a little pessimistic about this card. 4,000 is still a ridiculous amount of attack to attach to a monster, don't get me wrong, but it doesn't have the potentially brutal multi-attack function, nor the interruption on your opponent's turn that DRA has, and it doesn't really gel with the strategies of what I estimate to be the deck's best team-ups, Cyber Angels and or Heralds. There may be a format one day where you'll need that kind of raw spell and trap destroying power, but until we see a massive sea change in how the game is played, QUA is probably going to have to stay in the dry docks until we can bring its specs up to snuff. But now, I want to hear what you all think. Is there a matchup I didn't mention that QUA is absolutely dynamite in? And do you think I'm severely underestimating the power of this giant piece of gear made of metal? Let me know in the comments, and if you haven't already, please make sure to like, subscribe, and check out these other platforms that you can find me at. Thank you all so very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye